Hello everyone! Welcome to It's Crochet O'Clock. My name is Stephanie and we do this virtual stitching gathering almost every single Monday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So welcome. If this is your first time ever participating in a YouTube Live, please make sure that you are logged into your YouTube channel. If you're not, then it's not going to let you participate in the live chat. If you're watching the replay, then there is no live chat to um, watch or participate in. So sorry, make sure you come back next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so you can join in with the shenanigans live. Also, if you are new and you are not aware or if you just need a reminder, please make sure that you check the drop down menu where it normally says live chat. It, um, it defaults for some reason over to top chat. That's going to filter out some of the comments that are coming through in live chat and then I may respond to something and, and you'll be lost in the sauce. So just make sure that that is selected with um, live chat instead of top chat. While we are at it, while we are at it, they have already started. I can see the chat over there. <laughs> we have what's known as the Three Musketeers here at It's Crochet O'Clock. They are locals. They have been here for quite some time. And um, if you say a pun, or, or anything that can be made into a pun, then um, they're, they're going to get that. And then we have a couple folks who are vying for the D'Artagnan position. And they're vying, vying, vying very, very hard. So um, don't be offended. It's all in good fun. They are locals. They are not trolls. I promise you, we love them. Those, um, those names, by the way, is it Freaky, Sue, and Anthony. Okay? Just, just... We love them. It's who they are. Okay. Oh. Uh, Kim said it might be worthwhile to miss some comments. Yes, that is true. We have a, a whole. Oh, let me, let me mute my phone. What was I doing? There we go. I forgot to mute my phone. That would not be okay. So, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. Yes, if you hit the thumbs up, that lets the YouTube algorithm know that you are enjoying what's going on and that means that they will be more likely to suggest this video to somebody else who may not know about us. Oh look, I say that I'm going to do something controversial and we get everybody. We have Marley and we have Chantel. Chantel is normally very busy working as is Marley and Emma from Pip and Poppycock. They're all here <laughs> because so it's the week of controversy, all right? It's always, always, always a crazy week whenever I release a content theft video. I have a new one coming out on Thursday. So I thought, why not just do an unpopular opinion live chat? So this live chat is going to be all about unpopular opinions when it comes to crochet and yarn. And that is why I am wearing all, all of the pearls because I've seen some of you guys' responses. I asked earlier in the group for you guys to give me some unpopular opinions. And then we were, I was gonna be fun. It was gonna be great. Listen, one string of pearls is not enough, okay? Two strings of pearls is just not enough for this situation, okay? I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of pearl clutching so I just pulled out all the pearls all of them because I'm southern and that's just what we do we clutch our pearls okay so I'm gonna start this off with um, an unpopular opinion that seems to be with new youtubers this is more like a public service announcement okay um, one of you guys one of you guys who we know and love and is just the sweetest thing ever um, it came to me earlier very, very upset because they were in a YouTube Live and they mentioned something about um, they were so excited that the Crochet Guild of America conference next year was going to be in Denver because it's so close to them and it means that, that they'll be able to go. Well, that person got really nasty with them and basically called them a liar to everybody simply because they hadn't heard anything. So the unpopular opinion is that if you haven't heard it, then it must not be true. So the person that is speaking is a liar. 
don't do that to people, okay? Next year's conference is in Denver. It's over my birthday. We're going to be celebrating my birthday together. Everybody who comes to conference is going to get a piece of cake. I, I don't understand why people have to be so... Be kind to people, honestly. And especially, don't, don't do things like that. To, just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean that it ain't so. I don't even know why I'm... I don't even know why I brought out my crochet, you guys. I do not. Let's see. All right. Let me find this thread. Let me find, Marley said, oh my God, are you going to clutch your pearls? All of them, every single last one of them, all of them. Let me get over here to the beginning of this post. Oh, yes, Denver next year, Crochet Guild of America Conference is being held in Denver next year. My birthday is the 18th, the last day of conference is my birthday. So, yes, it's in Denver, whoever you are, YouTuber. <sighs> All right, so unpopular opinions. <sighs> it's like I don't even know some of you guys. Truly, it's like I don't even know some of you guys. Black isn't hard to crochet with. Listen, your eyes, you must eat nothing but carrots. Because I tell people all the time, if somebody gives you something and it's crocheted with black yarn, they love you. They really, really, really love you. <sighs> I, 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 I think I've only ever done two projects with black yarn because the first one, I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson and 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 if, if you can do it more power to you I, I I I I don't by the way in this thing like I specifically said y'all don't fight here because this is an unpopular opinion thread and then John goes through poking at everybody trying to stir the pot with everybody <sighs> I bet you weren't surprised by my comments. No, Kim, I was dreading you waking up. <laughs> you people who use black all the time, like I, I envy you because I, I cannot do it. Oh, it's a happy birthday, Chantel. It's not Chantel's birthday. I did not just sing happy birthday to her yesterday. It's not her birthday, right? Hmm. Weaving in ends is the best part. <sighs> Listen, for some, I know that weaving in ends is therapeutic and that you enjoy the situation and, and that it calms you down and all of that. But look, look, I don't know what I was thinking, okay? I agreed to do this baby blanket for a family member, and I went, oh yeah, that's easy. I'll be able to whip that sucker out in no time, no time at all. I didn't, it, it didn't even dawn on me, of all people. Look at all those stinking ends. It's going to take me a week to weave in all them daggum ends, unless I do a double border. If you hadn't made a point, in, point of mentioning it, I never would have seen it. Oh, well, <laughs> no, 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 she had a birthday last year. Is it, oh, weaving in ends is awesome. Oh man, some of you guys are, some of you guys are just twisted souls. Seriously, just twisted souls. Bulky yarns are so fun to work with. Oh, bulky yarns. I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's so much the yarn itself. I think it's the hooks. The hooks are so big and they're so awkward in my hands that I just, I, I can't get, I can't get a, I can't get a, I, I, I can't do it. Oh, so here comes one from John, and this is a super, super, I've recently had a sickness where I've started weaving in ends as I go, ooh, 
Mm, bless your heart. Have you been to the doctor? <laughs> so John said, um, unpopular crochet or yarn opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go. Okay, okay. So basically his um, unpopular opinion is that something that boys don't do. And then it's even gone even further of that's something that straight macho men don't do. You know, ma macho men, real men, real men don't crochet. Listen, anybody and everybody crochets. I hate it when people say that particularly because I'm from a military family and I know so many people, so many Marines and sailors, personally because I grew up in a Marine Corps family, who suffer from PTSD. And crochet and knitting can help. It does help. I know that you, a whole bunch of you guys remember Josh from Combat to Crochet. He spent several tours overseas in, in war and he had lots and lots of of issues with PTSD and he visited so many therapists which is something that most of them do not do because if you go to therapy then it's weak and the only thing that helped him all of the medicine that they tried all of that the only thing that helped him was crocheting and I know so many guys who crochet because of that because it does help and then I mean what's wrong with being able to make your own blanket exactly how you want to make it there's nothing wrong with that I hate I hate that unpopular opinion. I really, really do. But thank you, John, for putting that in there because people who say that suck, they do. And and I said what I said. They suck. <sighs> um, some people don't like Red Heart acrylic. I mean, for the price, it's a great value. People don't. People who don't like it are just wrong. Okay, well, I'm not a fan of it, but I also have an issue where. I, I have issues with sensitivity and I know that it washes up great and you guys have even sent me some blankets for the Snowball Express that I didn't even realize were Red Heart because it gets so soft after it. I just can't get through the process of it because it, it literally physically hurts me to do because my hands are so, my skin period is so sensitive. But you're correct because there are Afghans that have been on the back of my nanny and poppy's couches for as long as I can remember. Literally, I can remember being a kid sitting in their living room floor playing with toys and aggravating her because they were all over the place and those Afghans were on the back of the couch. She's She had them for forever and now my aunt has them because they're both gone, but they last for forever. Red Heart lasts for forever. It's not a bad yarn. I just personally can't can't do it myself with the Super Saver. Um, there are some other Red Heart yarns that I love, like Red Heart Unforgettable. I love Red Heart Unforgettable. I love it. Uh, unpopular opinion, Chain 4 and Slip Stitch is better than Magic Circles. If I could reach out and poke your eyeball out with my hook, sometimes yes. Sometimes, it, but sometimes you just need a tight center, okay? John, don't. Sue, don't. This. Sometimes you need a magic ring. Sometimes you need a chain four and a slip stitch, okay? Sometimes. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Um... For the waistcoat stitch, aka the knit stitch, or a center post stitch, you need to go up a hook size to get it to work. I, um, I think for newer people that haven't yet gotten the, that haven't gotten down tension and, and how to manipulate the yarn and, and all of that, um, I do think that it's good to go up a, a hook size. But if you're more of an, an advanced crocheter, then then no. I, I think you can do it fine with just the regular. When it hit the market, people didn't trust soft, soft yarn and always used wool, so coats made it like, made it like scratchy, like wool. Oh, I wish they would stop, Marley. <laughs> I'm not talking about all wool. But for Super Saver, it was to mimic Icelandic rough wool. Oh, see? We got Marley here, so now we're learning something through this as well. Oh, 
that's awesome information to have. That's very awesome information to have. Um, Veronica said, I always get the you knit comment because apparently a hook and a yarn always equal knitting, right? Right? Oh, man. Oh, Emma from Pip and Poppycock. Emma said, I can't do the waistcoat stitch. Really? Wow. Okay. Uh, oh, Alicia. This is a good one. Crochet thread would make an awesome king size blanket. <laughs> there was a, we had a patron Zoom meeting, one of the monthly patron Zoom meetings. Um, Ida was down visiting Terry, and they're both patrons. So we were in the Zoom meeting, and we were talking, and they had gone out to an antique store, and they found an antique crochet book that had all kinds of lace in it. And we were going through, and we were looking at that. Some of the curtains that were in there, you guys, some of the blankets that were in there, I'm going to have to disagree with this, okay? Because while I don't have the time, I wish that I had the time to make crochet curtains out of crochet thread. I really do. My nanny had crochet curtains in her dining room, and they were beautiful. And my aunt actually just hung them up in her house a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, hung them up in her dining room and she made sheer curtains to go behind them. And they are just the most beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm sure that the patrons will remember this conversation, but man, I, I wish that I had the time to sit down and, and make something like that. I, I, I do think it would be awesome. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, unpopular opinion. So-called yarn barf is not a problem at all. It's just extra yarn that is now outside the skein. It may be for people that, that, that enjoy, you know, taking extra time to, to ugh. I mean, little yarn barf, I don't mind. But when I go to go pull from the center and half of the skein comes out with it. I mean, come on! What were you doing, dude, in the manufacturing company who decided to start that skein of yarn? What were you thinking? Certainly not of me, the end user over here that's going to have to figure out all of your mess. Oh, man. Jen said I started making a Sophie's Garden with embroidery thread. I had fun, but quickly ran out of thread. Oh, my. I can't imagine a crochet thread blanket would be warm. They're not meant for warmth. They're meant for decoration. <laughs> it's meant for decoration. Um, detangling yarn is not a hellish nightmare. It's fun. Sick and twisted minds. The whole lot of you. Sick, twisted minds. Um, oh gosh, and now we get down to it. Friend, <laughs> my good Judy had to go and pop her two cents in. A couple of my good Judys had to go pop their, their two cents in. Miss Marleybird said, I have a lot of opinions about weaving in ends versus crocheting over them. I'm absolutely against crocheting over the top. You know, I agree with that now but for the longest time I mean forever ago and I can tell you the moment when I decided that I was never going to crochet over and end again it was when I was doing my first run through of Emma's um, Arizona blanket and it's a big blanket and it starts out with squares that you turn on a diamond and the squares start out with a magic ring Never in my life had I ever had a magic ring come undone, had yarn wiggle itself out after I had crocheted over the ends. Never had I ever. And I'm sitting there and I'm working on this blanket and you do one row here, then you flip it over and you mirror it and do it on, on the other side. So this blanket was constantly getting turned around and pulled this way and that way, especially once it got bigger. Because I wasn't smart enough to do one whole side 
and then flip it and then do one whole side. No, 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 no. I, I was rotating each one because because I'm crazy and I wasn't thinking. Well, I popped out three of my magic rings. And I was like four or five steps into the seven part crochet along. And they're in the center, the dead center. So I had to sit there and I had to figure out how to doctor these back because you know, nothing ever pops out in a uniform manner. They're all always different. And even during the pandemic, Ida helped me remember that I did have two more that actually popped out because I never went back to fix the ones because I was in such a hurry and then I had to film the tutorials. I think that this is a situation where people are going to have to learn the hard way because that's how I was. You know, I, I was just, why? Why? I'm sitting, th there's so many stitches going over this to, to hold. Why do I need to? And until you put so many hours into something and have it basically get ruined and because that could have been really bad if I hadn't have caught it when I did there would have been no saving it there there would have been no way that I would have been able to figure out how to put that back together and have it look even remotely close to, to what it was that was the moment that I decided that every single end was going to be woven in from that point on I was never ever just going to crochet over ends <sighs> but I'm with you I'm with you. Marley said, I also think instructors have a responsibility of teaching with proper terms and techniques, especially when it's a beginner pattern. Not doing so is a disservice to the crocheter who tries to continue with the craft or read a pattern and knows nothing. Absolutely. And so many people get cranky about that and it aggravates the fire out of me because if you are going to teach people how to do something, Speaking of which, I even did. When I first started my YouTube channel, I always crocheted over over my ends as an example. And then I had to learn the hard way. And now I don't ever do that. I don't ever do that. But I think everybody is guilty of it at, at some point. But if you're going to start a YouTube channel, because I have people ask me about starting YouTube channels all the time, you better know your business. You better know your stuff before you go out there and you decide that you're going to teach the masses. Because then we end up with situations that make my eye twitch. Because I cannot. Speaking of which, Marley also says, not all teachers are created equal. And just because someone is a popular, de de popular designer doesn't mean that they're a good teacher. Preach. 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 And the same goes in reverse. Just because somebody can teach well does not mean that they can design well. We're not all good at everything but I really I, I hate it because there's some popular designers out there some super popular designers that everybody they're like way up here way way up here on the echelon of 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 idolized and and you know whatever they say is the gospel and a lot of the times some of the things that they say is not the way that it actually is and this is how things get get crazy is that th this is how stuff gets all mucked up. Again, pay attention to what you're doing. Because <laughs> together stitches are not cluster stitches. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard because I'm going to end up getting off on a tangent. That, 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 that's not going to be. Eyelash yarn is awesome. Marley, stop it. Oh. <sighs> You guys, I can't tell you how many times I have people send me messages. How many times people send me emails complaining because they are following a tutorial of mine and it's not working out for them and they're frustrated and they can't figure out what they're doing wrong and they're new to crochet and they're they're at my channel to learn how to do this and I'm not helping them and they demand help. And then I tell them to send me a picture of what they are doing and they've got stinking scrubby yarn or eyelash yarn is that what I told you to use is that even remotely close to what I told you to use no 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 
how many times do I have to say? If you're new to crochet, don't use the novelty yarns. Yes, it's pretty. Yes, it's fluffy. Ooh, it would make a great, great scarf. But listen, honey, you're not there. You are not there. You need to crawl before you walk. You are not, not, not there. Oh. Listen, I don't even use that mess unless I'm forced to. I don't. And I've been crocheting for forever. I mean, not forever, obviously, but a really long time. And I don't even use that mess. I don't even do that. Like... It's not fabulous, y'all. It's not fabulous. And anybody that can live through that and still come out smiling, I need whatever happy pills it is that you're taking each morning. You need to let me know what your prescription is. I need that. <sighs> oh. Oh. Now here we go. This is a twofer, okay? This is a twofer because my heart was broken. You guys, my heart was broken. Two of my good Judies, two of my good Judies said the same thing. Marley and Chantel Fiberific over there in the chat both said yarn bombing is a waste of yarn. Yarn bombing is a You are both disinvited. You are both disinvited from the Snowball Express 2021 where we will yarn bomb Harry Potter land. Since it's stupid and it's a waste of yarn. It's a, not really. I love you both. And if you want to come, you can still come. But you're disinvited. How dare you? <sighs> just, just. <sighs> So, on a serious note, I mean, I'm still clutching my pearls over this, but on a serious note, I do not agree with those statements. And the reason that I do not agree with them is because, here's the thing, hashtag I stand by that, you can stand by that all you want, but here's my outlook on it, okay? I never look at giving somebody a smile as a waste of anything, of my time or wh whatever, wh whatever the situation is. And most of the time when you yarn bomb, you're going to make somebody smile. And I don't know, hopefully Snowball Express 2021, hopefully COVID and everything will be all, you know, taken care of and under control and we can have Snowball Express next year. But I really, really, in my mind, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off, but We've talked about a whole bunch of us gathering in Orlando and going and yarn bombing um, the new Harry Potter land. And in my mind, it would be so great to be there while the Snowball Express is going on and all of those Gold Star kids running around Disney World and for us to bomb Harry Potter land. And I... Like my whole goal is to see all of the smiles and, and I think I would be severely disappointed if I didn't at least hear one child wanting to find out where Molly Weasley was. Like I want it to look like Molly Weasley was all over the place, but it would make people smile. So that's my look on it. We need to go bomb, <laughs> yarn bomb Marley's house. I'm on board with that. I mean, don't ever stalk anybody. Don't don't ever stalk any designers or or, or YouTubers, but don't let me find out where your hotel room is in um, Denver. If you happen to stay at the hotel for conference and stay at your mama's house, don't let me find out where it is. I'm just throwing that out there. <sighs> oh, man. Yeah. So I don't ever think that, that giving somebody a, a, a smile is, is a waste of time. And whenever I see them, I smile. You know, they, they make me smile. <sighs> um, Harry Potter is at Universal Studios, not Disney. Yes, but they do do they do do go over 
to um, Universal. Universal does take part in some of the stuff. So there. Um, Stephanie is looking at you, Spanner Chick. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in chat because I'm trying to get through these. They just keep going on and on and on. Tying a knot to join yarn. Listen, you guys. Several of you guys talked about this, and even Chantel talked about this. And and this is one of her. This is one of her things. Listen, I do that. I am a fan of the magic knot. But let me tell you, okay, my good Judy Betty McNitt. All right, she like the whole together cluster stitch thing with her eyes tying a knot and not um, weaving in your end and then just con continuing on, Betty loses her mind over it. Now she's very graceful about it because most of the time she won't say anything to, to anybody because that's just not what you do. Betty will lose her mind and we were taking a picture at the last conference. <laughs> I'm evil. Oh, I'm evil. I deserve every bit of what you guys are giving me today. But we were taking a picture and I forget who was taking the picture and I never got a copy of it. But Betty and I were standing next to each other and I think Mo was on the other side of Betty or maybe Mo was on the other side of me, but I whispered in Betty's ear. <laughs> Magic knot is better. <laughs> she was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh man but <laughs> I'm a fan of the magic knot I am probably because I hate weaving in ends so much I I really really do um but but it's and then the other thing is my OCD if I like I have this granny grouping right here, three double crochets, and my last stitch is here on this double crochet in the center, it just doesn't look right to me. When you put another one right next to it, you know, like, the, it, it just doesn't look right to me. It doesn't, my OCD just, just can't, just, just can't. <laughs> Marley, no magic knot! Just like, no wire hangers, I love the magic knot. I do, I do. I do. I really, really, really do. Oh. I really, really, really do. The magic knot does not work with all yarns. No, no, it doesn't. Oh, Miss Kitty said with a Russ and join. Oh man, I can't even with that sucker. I cannot even. My OCD just goes crazy. I cannot with the Russ and join for that whole length where you've done that join at. That stitch looks funky. You are, and I can see it. Terry can tell you that I can see it. You people poke fun at me all the time and tell me, oh, you'd never be able to see it. Terry sent me a picture of something that she's testing for me right now, and I looked right at her and I said, Did, Is that how I told you to do that? No. <laughs> and you missed a stitch. Come <laughs> on. I was like, No. I can't do it. I can't do it. A granny said, Thank you. Thank you. Oh man. Working over a knot in a yarn ball instead of cutting it out. Who does that? Who does that? I didn't even know that the, you guys don't do that. If any of you guys are doing that, okay, look, the reason that there's knots in balls of yarn, I've said this I don't know how many times, the reason that there's knots in balls of yarn is because if they didn't do it, there would be tons of waste and the yarn would be more expensive, okay? So what they're doing is the yarn comes on these massive cones and then it's feeding to the machines that's building our balls or building our skeins, all of that. And then it has to get to a certain weight. And if it doesn't reach that weight, by the time the cone ends, they put another cone on, they tie it together, and then they continue to spin until it reaches that weight. If they didn't do that, you know, like it was five ounces away from being the, the, the total ounce that it needed to be. If, if they just threw that yarn away every time that happened, the cost would be tremendous. Some folks like nurturing fibers and 
another brand that I don't like to talk about, they actually figured out a way to reduce the knots in their yarn. Sometimes almost zero. Nurturing Fibers doesn't have any knots, but that's why we have the bonbons, because all of that extra that is left over, they use that for the bonbons. So they won't raise the cost of their yarn because they can still make money from the waste of and not tie a knot. But th th those people, you know, like we've already discussed this with the whole yarn barf thing. They don't care about the end user. They're just somebody that's making a paycheck, standing in a warehouse that, 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 that's running a machine that's balling up our yarn. They put in these slack little no little knots in there and it's just horrible. Don't ever do that. You cut them suckers out. You tie your own. You tie your own. <laughs> Never. Never. Ever. You, you, you just, you don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. <gasps> Lindsay said she had a knot in her nurturing fibers. That's not okay. You should have sent me a picture. You should have sent me a picture. That's not okay. Um, okay. Here comes a good one. Here comes a really good one. I find the term hookers for people who crochet as gross. You know what? Liz Bowman, I am right there with you. I do not like being called a hooker. I really, really, really do not like it. I know that it's common practice in our industry and that people get such a chuckle out of it and, and all of that, but I don't think it's cute. I just don't. So I'm right there with you. I don't agree with that. I don't like it at all. <sighs> yep, Carrie's going to go pick up squish mail. Bye bye, Carrie. That's not okay. It, it it's just I don't like it. I don't like being called a, a hooker. I don't like being referred to as a hooker. I'm a lady. Uh, hey, there's my friend Naughty Little Skein. Yeah. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Marley said my own yarn has had multiple knots in it and I was so PO'd. We told the mill no more than two if it must be done, but like you said, they don't care. They're just getting a paycheck. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Is is the you, you know they're they're in a they're they're in a factory and they're getting paid by the hour and they they don't care about you know what's what's going on. Oh, they just. They don't, and and it's it's not okay. I I don't I don't like it. That that's kind of like you know how all all of the kids these days like when they're referring to their girlfriends, they're they're using the B word, referring to their girlfriends. And I'm like, what what are you doing? That's just it. I mean, I, I don't want to sound uptight or anything because believe me, I am the furthest thing from being uptight. I was raised in a Marine Corps family in a Marine Corps town, all right? I can get filthy with the best of them, but the, I also do it with class. Believe it or not, it's possible. It's very possible. I don't like being called a hooker. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um... I've had so many people say this, oh, you knit crochet, actually. Can you make me a blanket? It will only take you a couple hours, and I can give you the $10 for the yarn. <laughs> hmm. We'll go find somebody else. I'm busy. I'm always busy. This right here, like, I am always busy. I got, like, the guilty conscience got the best of me. She didn't even ask me. She didn't even ask me. She said, your, your niece is having a baby. And, and, and I need a baby blanket and she's vegan and, and it has to be special yarn and I know that you're busy. Can, can you help me? Can I pay somebody that you know and trust to make a baby blanket for me because I can't do it? <sighs> yes, buy the yarn, I will do it. I will do it. Uh... Oh, here goes one. 
I think using expensive yarns on a kid's item is wasteful and stupid. All right, Emily. I'm going to give you a different perspective on that one because I disagree with that for some cases. If it's a blanket that's going to be used every single solitary day that's going to be thrown up on and all kinds of other baby stuff and, and all of that, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And I would not spend $300 on doing something like that. But there are situations where... Um, I think that there is such a thing as an heirloom. Just like we were talking about with the curtains or the big king size blanket that's made out of crochet thread, those things are heirlooms that can be passed down and passed down and passed down. You know, like great grandchildren could be getting christened or baptized for, for the first time in, in that blanket. Great grandchildren could be coming home from the hospital with that blanket wrapped around them. So I think that there are specific instances where, yes, the quality of the yarn and spending more money on it for baby items does make sense. Does make sense. So I disagree with that one. Um, Emily also said, I think the whole culture of selling whatever you are making is dumb. We can't just crochet for the fun of it without having to feel the pressure of monetization. For a lot of people, yes. Um, it's the it's the stupid culture of every minute of every day has to be spent making money or it's not worthwhile. Okay, so one thing, like, there are people that do nothing but, but make handmade items. My Kiwi Bestie, it's not her main form of, of income, but she does have a very big following over there in in New Zealand. That woman is always cranking out beanies for for people. My cousin cranks out beanies for people that she works with and they pay an obscene amount of money for a beanie. But I mean, hey, you know, if you're going to make me make something then I'm going to charge you crazy prices for it cuz I don't want to do it. But I get what you're saying about the the whole pressure of it. My I am working from the moment my feet hit the floor in the morning until I collapse in the bed almost every single day because my own private island is not going to buy itself and I got work to do and ain't nobody it's not just going to fall in my lap. <laughs> so I kind of agree with that but then I kind of, of don't agree with it. I don't sell anything that I make. I don't take commissions. I will not take commissions because I do not like the pressure of it. Um, and, 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 and I just won't, will not. Um, Carol Evans, bless Carol. When you spend hours on something for a gift and then you see it in the dog's bed. I have never had that happen to me. I don't know what I would do if I spent all of that time on something and somebody had the nerve had the nerve to put it on a dog bed. Unless it was made specifically for a dog, because listen, I'm a dog mom, okay? I'm a dog mom. And and when that whole trend was going out with the cat beds, I was sitting there looking at it, wondering if I could make one Jackama size, because I'm a dog mom. But, ooh, I do not know what I would do. <sighs> Marley said, I want to be old and rich, so I work hard from when I wake up to when I sleep. And when I sleep, I even dream about it. I am right there with you, honey. Right there with you. Private islands are not going to buy itself. Marley, you can have the island right next to me, and I'll wave at you from the beach underneath an umbrella because I'm really, really super white, and I turn red really quickly. <laughs> oh, no, so many people. So many people have had... Oh no, that's not okay. So many people have had, do people really do this? Like th that's a common thing, that's not okay. Caught it in a Facebook post in the dog crate. <gasps> I would throw hands, all right? Listen, I would flat out throw hands on somebody. I'm a lady, okay? I am a grown woman, and I do believe, I do. I would never speak to that person again, ever. 
ever. Oh, I would never speak to that person again. Oh. Let's see, um, we already went through that one. Let's see. <laughs> Chantel, eyelash yarn is Muppet murder. I actually agree with that. I hate eyelash yarn. I really do. I dislike it great. Uh, greatly. Ugh. English speaking crafters all use either US or UK crochet terminology, even if you work from videos, charts, or fully written. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Like, I, I, I don't understand, you know. I don't get that. You know, like there, there's so many people who, who say things to me about not doing my tutorials in UK terms or when I'm talking about yarn, how I don't stop and, and tell everybody, you know, it's this here in the US, it's this over in Europe, it's this over in Australia and, and New Zealand. I'm an American YouTuber. There's all kinds of UK YouTubers. There's all kinds of Australian YouTubers. There's room for all of us. You know, I, I live in, in the United States. I try my hardest, but I don't always remember to do it. And listen, quite frankly, I get confused. If I have to go back and forth between UK and US terminology, y'all remember th that thing back there? Y'all remember that long ass, oh, long stole that I that took me forever to make because it was in UK terminology and I kept doing the wrong stitches <sighs> y'all y'all listen I'm sorry I'm sorry I use US terminology and I'm American okay I can only do so much <laughs> <sighs> And while I love you guys that are over on the other side of the planet, listen, I ain't got the time to figure out what it might be called in every single region all across the globe. I just don't have that time. I do not. Ooh. Uh, Chantel said, I teach in U.S. terminology. More than 50% of my viewers are in the, the U.S. I understand that. Maybe... I understand that. <sighs> family friendly, you guys. Family friendly. <laughs> oh, thank you again. Super chat. Naughty little skein. All yarn except Hanks can be a center pool. But also, it's a matter of preference, not necessarily right or wrong. I, do, I prefer to pull from the center. I don't like my yarn to flop around. Some things are designed. I mean, like, if you work hard enough, I'm sure that you can find the center of everything. But sometimes they are actually designed, and when the manufacturer is balling them up or skeining them up, they, um, they, um, um, they actually design them to be center pool. Some are actually not designed to be center pool. Um... Oh, wait. So I misunderstood. Chantel sent me a correction. She said, no, no. Laugh out loud. See, I went off on a tangent just, just on something that she didn't even mean. It was more that people say they don't use USA or UK. They use YouTube or they use charts. It's still one or the other. Yeah, I, I don't get that either. I, I don't get that. I, I don't. What? What? A double crochet is a double crochet is a double crochet is a double crochet. I don't care if you're looking at it at a chart. Yeah, it may be called something different in the UK, but it's still the same daggone thing. Oh, I, I, I don't, I can't with people. I can't with people. Oh. Uh. When your hank has well over a dozen breaks and splices in it, and it's from Knit Crate. Listen, Megan, if that happened to you, then you should you should have contacted Knit Crate because they would have not been okay with that. All right. Um. Oh, my husband tells me I have enough yarn. 
do you have enough food in you? Because that's going to be the last bit that you get cooked with my hands. Listen, if I don't, I'm not one of these super feminist, crazy, you know, like there, there's people and, and they're even in our group that if somebody says something about sneaking yarn past their husband or, or it, it sets them off and, and they just go off the wall. And I, I'm not one of those people, but I just don't get it. If you're not hurting anybody and you're not causing financial hardship for your household and it makes you happy, why wouldn't they be happy for you? I could never be with anybody who did not enjoy seeing me smile or seeing me laugh or seeing me excited of, about opening something or, or it, I, I don't understand that whole mentality. And listen, there's never enough yarn. There is never enough yarn. I could choose a project to do. And you see all of this yarn that is in here. This isn't even half of the yarn that is in my house. I'm not lying. It's only half the yarn <laughs> that, that is in my house. And I would still end up probably needing to go buy some type of yarn for, for, for something because I didn't have the color that I wanted or, or something like that. I just, I just don't. Yeah. Um, Oh, and another thing that irks me is people that are afraid to try new pattern stitches, what have you. Just do it. The worst that will happen is you will have to frog something and, and you spent some time on it. The world won't end if you don't figure it out. And also, I will fudge mistakes instead of frogging if I can get away with it. Uh, no one will know but you. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> and lastly, I don't care if my blankets are perfectly square when I finish them. When in use, you'll never know it's not. <laughs> oh, Christina. Oh, Christina just said a mouthful. Just said a mouthful. It just, okay, I would see it. All right? I would see it. I don't mention things because people are always in crochet groups on Facebook. They're always posting pictures of... Um, of their work and going, oh no, I just noticed a mistake. Can you see it? And everybody's like, no, no, I don't see anything. What are you talking about? And I, it, it's like, well, 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 to me, because I'm OCD, you guys, I'm honest to goodness OCD. I see it. Now I realize that I am not the majority, but listen, <laughs> I can see it. And people are afraid to try new things. They just are. That's, you know, why people like Chantel and Marley and, and I, that's why we have the jobs that, that we have. That's why we get to be able to teach people and to do our best to try and do it in a way that is, you know, inviting for them. And that's why there's so many of us because so many people, um, you know, they learn at different paces. Some people teach at different paces. Some everybody has different teaching styles. There's so many different places for them to to learn from, but it's still scary. It's still scary. I think a lot of people. I just released yesterday a tutorial on doing a simple granny square. We take things like that for granted because we've been doing it for so long. You probably don't even remember the first time you picked up a crochet hook. You don't remember the first time that you had to try to figure out how to do a chain and make it cohesive through the whole thing. Heck, sometimes I even fail. If my attention gets off of it for too long and or I'm talking to somebody or or something great is, is happening, you know, like a Viking goes by shortless or something, there goes my chain. You know, I mean, it happens and it's frustrating for, for new people and it's scary. You got to remember that, that you've been doing this for a while. You've been doing this for a while. No frog. John, uh, you're disinvited to. Uh, Lindsay said properly sewing in your ends. We've already discussed that. Not properly sewing in your ends is lazy. It is. It is, but it's also 
just not learning that hard lesson yet. I really do believe that. I, I think that people just need to learn the hard lesson. Um, never join new yarn and chain up. Use standing stitches. Oof, I am a fan of the standing stitch. I hate the chain up. I really do. Oh, I hate it. I, I, I hate the chain up. I will always use standing stitches if, if I am able to. <laughs> she had Viking goes past shirtless and my chains are so tight I wouldn't be able to work into them. Yes. Yes. <sighs> Magic rings only come undone if you don't properly secure them. Again, don't be lazy. Now, I, you know, I, I would like to say that, but... You know, I, I don't know. I've never had one of mine since I started paying attention, and I weave the fire out of some magic rings now. Every, you know, normally three passes, and and I'm done. No, until I've run out of the yarn on that tail, it's getting woven in. Um, let's see, Vanessa Smith. My good Judy, Vanessa Smith, ban the bullion. I am right there with you. Oh, a bullion stitch. Listen, I will not work your pattern. I will not work your pattern. I, I won't. I, if you put bullions into your pattern, I'm not going to watch it. Or, 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 I'm, I'm not going to do it. Not going to. Knit and crochet, whatever, they're exactly the same thing. Really? Really? Do we need to go there? Do we need to go there? Oh no, Gamer Widows. Gamer Widows said, I don't like cotton yarn. I know, sacrilegious. Listen, I'm right there with you, Emma. I am right there. Her real name's Emma, by the way. I'm right there with you. I hated cotton yarn. Hated it. But the big issue that I had with cotton yarn is again I'm American and the cotton yarn that we have readily available to us here in in the US with my sensitivity issues it, it felt like sandpaper in my hands and that's all that I knew that was all that I knew you know it, it it's very recent in our history that ordering yarn online and ordering yarn from across the world has become a thing. The United States is really, it's a big place. Not as big as Australia, obviously, but it's a big place. And local yarn stores, you know, they're, they're technically, they're few and far between over the, the space of area that, that we had. Until Jennifer forced me to use Nurturing Fibers cotton yarn, I didn't know any better. I literally did not know any better, and, and now I love it. I love this yarn. I am still very leery of other cotton yarns until I feel them in my hand, and then I'm like, eh, okay, then I'll work with them, and then I'm like, oh no, 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 you're still not there yet. But some cotton yarns are very, very good to work with. Others, I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Just, just would not. Cotton yarn is only for towels and dishcloths. That's not the case. That is not the case. You know, babies have issues regulating their body temperature. So cotton baby blankets are actually super great for, for babies. Acrylic, if you make acrylic, yes, it's easier for mom. You know, she can throw it into the washer. She can throw it on, on a low tumble dry. Cotton baby blankets, they have to be hung up. You can't put them in, in, into the dryer. Um, so it, it's a bit more upkeep for mom but babies can't regulate their temperature. So cotton baby blankets are actually, they're, they're, they're a real thing. And listen, weighted blankets are a thing and they're fabulous. And if you make a really big cotton blanket, it's gonna have weight to it. And that sucker is gonna hug you back, okay? You're not gonna change my mind. You're not going to change my mind. Um, being told you have enough yarn. Do you have enough air? Do you have enough air? No? Okay then. Suck a fish. Who would say that to somebody? You have enough yarn. <laughs> oh, 
using the word border for but the, the, the spelling of, of border drives me crazy. I see this everywhere. A border surfs, skates, or pays for meals in, in a bed. They don't belong on your blanket. Yes, that's a lot of stuff. Oh gosh, and here we go. We, we get into Kim woke up over in Australia. Designers for free patterns shouldn't have to provide pattern support. I, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm kind of on the fence about that because if I make a pattern, I want to make sure that people understand what I was trying to say because just like not everybody teaches the same, not everybody writes the same. So yes, yes, and yes, and no. Yes and no with, with that. Designers are not obligated to write patterns in every size. If a designer doesn't offer a pattern in your size, then you just need to be to get good enough to be able to adjust it yourself. Reach. And that doesn't just come with clothes, okay? Nothing aggravates me more than having somebody email me because they want to turn Yaya's hugs into a queen size blanket and they want me to do the math for them. That's not what I designed. I designed a throw blanket, okay? It's toddler size. I designed that for my grandbabies to wrap around themselves and go trucking through their, their, their house, pretending to be Superman and drive my daughter crazy. That's what I designed that blanket for. I did not design a queen size blanket and it's not my responsibility to do your math for you. If you want to change my pattern from the way that it was written, then you need to sit down and you need to grab some pen and paper and a calculator and you need to do your own daggum math. Plain and simple. That's not what I designed. You want to change my design, you do it yourself. Don't come to me when you got issues either. I said what I said. <sighs> YouTubers don't have to volume level their videos. Yeah, you tell that to the world. I messed up and I forgot to do that once. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. That's just not okay. So Yaya's hugs is a cape. Yes. Yes, that's what I envision. My grandbabies running around driving their mama nuts playing superhero. Okay, no charts or patterns, no charts in pattern or magazines. I don't get this. Again, that goes with the whole, with, with what I just said. I don't get that. And to me, it's a little bit, yeah, I, I, I'm going through that stress r right now because I'm getting ready to release my very first ever paid pattern. And I'm going crazy going, I got to get this done, and I got to get this done, and I got to get this done, and I got to get this done. And why? Why do I have to have all of this stuff for you? I, I, I don't understand it. Why am I obligated to create a chart for you? None of my other patterns have, have charts with them. You know, uh, there is no standard of if you write out a written pattern, then, then you have to, to write out a chart to, to go with it. And the people that, that say things like that to me, because people on the internet, it's like they have no filter. They have no upbringing. Their mama did not teach them that you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. They did not learn that, apparently, because people are rude. And then they send you messages, or they send you emails, or they leave you nasty comments on your YouTube videos where you have taken the time to do a tutorial to literally hold their hand and walk them through the situation, and they're mad because you did not take the time to put out a chart for them. If I wanted it to have a chart, then I would have made a chart. It's just... I, um... That's just... 
And then when people do that mess with free patterns, <laughs> woo, by all means, dictate to that designer who has spent hours and hours of their time to give you something for free. You just go right on ahead. You just keep on living your life the, the, the way that, that you're living it. You need Jesus. Oh, you need Jesus. <sighs> paid patterns should not be in parts, i.e. paid cows. If you're paying, you should get the whole pattern up front. So, that's from my good Judy, Emma. What are you doing? Where did you get there? So, um, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe, oh, somebody didn't like that. Somebody gave thumbs down. I love it when I get thumbs down. I do. So, you, by the way, anything that, that, that I'm saying here, if, if, if you don't like it and you're one of those stinking people, <laughs> I said what I said, okay? Just because you are entitled and you think that designers owe you the world wrapped up with a little bow in you just keep on living your life like that. You just keep on doing it. I ain't gonna do it. You ain't gonna get that from me. And I don't know any of my good duties that are gonna do it for you either. I I don't understand the the premise of it personally, myself. I mean if that's what you wanna do, that's what you wanna do with your um I, I don't know. I'm I'm on the fence with it. I can see why they would on on one hand, especially for super complicated patterns. Super complicated patterns. I can see why um why they would do that because they're cows are a lot of work and the admin team and the tester team they that they're really overwhelmed with questions. And if it's super complicated, I, I can see why they would bust it up and why they would only release pieces at, at a time just to try and keep the flow of, of you know, everybody's, everybody's brain is on part two and the, there's a big issue with, with part two, but then Sally Jo over here is super fingers and she's all the way into part six and she's run into an issue, you know, to keep all of the things on on track. So, I can see why they would do it. Um, Kim, it's not real pho without tripe. Kim, I knew you were going to say that. That does not have anything to do with crochet and yarn. Just because yarn has a high price tag doesn't mean it's better quality. You know what? I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, and I have fussed about it for years. I have fussed about it. There is a very, very, very popular, and everybody's like, ooh, this is the yarn that I use. This is the yarn that I use. And before it was being sold in U.S. stores, there was this big old huge thing because it's touted as a premium European yarn. But the thing is, is that company closed because the laws in the country changed for labor rates and they were extremely high. Everybody in, in, in that country gets paid an extremely high, you know, what we here in the U.S. consider extremely high, but their taxes are also crazy. And it was written into the laws that they could not pass that cost over to the consumer. And what happened during that time was all of their industry left the entire country, all of it. Their manufacturing was just gone, non-existent, because they couldn't afford to manufacture anything in the country. And it was super sad for, for that. But then 13, 14, no, no, 20-something years later, um, this other company purchased that name. And then they started, you know, reselling the yarns. And everybody was like, woo, they're back, so excited about it. And they have a premium price. 
It is a premium price for premium European yarn is, is what you are, is what they are selling and what they are letting everybody believe. And those of us who play with a, yow, a lot of yarn all the time and that know people all over the globe started noticing, hey, this yarn is just like this, and hey, this yarn is just like this, and then, hey, I, I have this picture here of this store brand yarn here in New Zealand, and it has this name brand's tag on it, and look, it's made in China. Nobody would ever answer questions. Nobody would ever answer questions, and then they started selling their yarn in the United States, and in the U.S., you have to state where products are manufactured, and it's manufactured in China, and they're selling it at a premium European price point when it's manufactured in China with, you know, so many other yarns that aren't as expensive as, as yours. So, um, so, yeah, just because it's got a premium name on it doesn't make it any better does not make it any better because folks be dishonest out there all right they need Jesus they be dishonest all Tim Tams are real you is a lie and the devil is inside you Kim Scullin you know better you know better Marley I can't believe that you've been following my channel for that long and you don't know because I I've had a couple explosions about that yarn before but we'll talk <laughs> <laughs> we will talk. Um, grits are best with sugar and maple syrup. Listen. I can't with you, John. I, I cannot with you. A bobble puff and a popcorn are not the same. Emma, yes. I don't understand. It, it makes me crazy in this day of information and technology. It's literally, you see, they aren't even close. They aren't even close. A bobble is squat. It's wee. A puff is smooth and elegant. And then a popcorn looks like a flippin' popcorn. That's why it's called popcorn. What do you mean? What do you mean that they're the same thing? How do you get there? <sighs> I don't, I don't get this. That, that makes me crazy. I don't. Ooh, my blood pressure. Like, I, I really don't get that. And what really aggravates me is going back to something that, that Marley said earlier in, in the thread is people teaching things like this. And, and, and it's Emma's next thing, where she, the cluster stitch debate. It aggravates the fire out of me. And just because a designer is popular and a designer has put out X number of patterns and everybody in the world knows them and they're so popular, I don't care who they are. If they are calling a together stitch a cluster stitch, they are wrong. They are wrong. That is not what it is. We have researched over almost 100 years back. Pattern that was what like, what was it, like 86 years old that, that we researched three years ago and it was a cluster stitch. It was a cluster stitch. And it, well, that's what I've always called it. You, you know, if you were raised your entire life never speaking to anybody else and your mama told you that the color of the sky was green and then set you out into the world when you were 21 years old and you started arguing with folks that the sky was not blue, the sky was green, you would still be wrong. I don't care what your mama told you. I don't care what that designer tells you. I don't care what anybody else says. A bobble a puff, a popcorn stitch are not the same thing, and a stinking together stitch is not a cluster stitch. One is a decrease and one is not. Come on. They aren't even, you gotta work over three stitches to get a together stitch, or two stitches. 
to bring it together. Stitch is bringing it together. We're bringing it together. Cluster Stitch is just all. It's not the same. It is not the same thing. It is not the same thing. But I will snatch somebody up. I will, I will want to snatch somebody up. I will not because I'm a lady. But I will be sitting there thinking about snatching you up. That is what I will be doing. Snatching you all up. Oh, it's not okay. There is one designer, super gorgeous and complicated designs, but instead of calling a back post stitch what it is, she makes up her own terminology. Listen, I can't with that. It's just like the alpine stitch. The alpine stitch is another one that flipping gets my goat. Oh man, does it get me fired up. Listen, it's an alpine blanket. That woman designed a beautiful blanket using an extremely simple stitch that makes so many different color combinations could change everything about it. Okay, it was brilliant. Brilliant. And because it was so simple, it took the crochet world by storm and it went viral. So viral that all of a sudden a front post treble is no longer a front post treble. It's an alpine stitch. I, I, it's a front post treble. That's what it is. Or a front post double. It's a front po It's already got a name. Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Stop trying to be special. You're not special, okay? The blanket is special all by itself. Not saying that she did, because she didn't. Everybody else out there did it. All she did was just name a stinking blanket. That's all she did. She used front post stitches in a strategic way, created something beautiful, called it the Alpine blanket, and now all of a sudden everybody's decided that that's the Alpine stitch. No, it's not. No, it is not. That is just front post stitches. I can't with people. I cannot with people. I just really, really. Oh, and then my Kiwi bestie, my Kiwi bestie, who, by the way, I do not understand how we became besties. I'm her American bestie. She's my Kiwi bestie. <sighs> Much to the Kiwi's display or dismay. YouTubers get to the point of what your video is about. Quit the waffle. Okay, first thing, I am an American YouTuber, Maxine. American. And what you just said to me meant that I flip-flop back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and, and I do that all the time, okay? I'm a talker. I'm chatty, all right? I want to explain things. I want to make sure that folks understand it. Sometimes I want to tell a story. You know what? It's my channel. And if you don't like it, if you don't like me being chatty, then maybe you just need to find another channel to go to because, listen, I'm going to do my thing. This is my house. This is my house. And it ain't Burger King. You don't get to have it your way. This is my way. This is my house. And if I want to chit-chat, then I'm going to chit-chat because that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a talker. Okay? I'm a talker. Don't post one pic to 100 groups at the same time. I'm in those 100 groups and I don't need to see your pic 100 times. Listen, hallelujah. Okay? And, and I realize that as a designer, whenever we have testers, part of, the, part of the great thing about having testers is that testers will help you spread the word about your pattern. But listen, if you guys ever, 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 ever start to test for a designer take multiple photos of the item and make sure that they're good photos okay don't go, don't come to us designers throwing out photos of your beautiful work and and your feet in them okay don't do that mess don't 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 send us pictures you know where where you're cooking dinner in in the background and that's not what testers do, okay? You need to have clear backgrounds or at least, you know, beautiful, beautiful backgrounds behind it. You need to display their pieces in the best way possible and you need to get several angles, okay? Take several stinking pictures and you pepper them, okay? You pepper them all over the internet because they're beautiful, okay? Do not go out there with one stinking picture and post them to a thousand different places with one picture. You ain't gonna do nothing but do the exact opposite of what you're supposed to be doing for that designer. The exact 
opposite. You need to throw out some flavor out there. Flavor it. You know, the tea's over here, and then tea's over there, and oh, look at this corner here, and how beautiful it is, and look at, look at the center of this blanket, you, you know? Ooh, those edges. Ooh, those edges. You know, just get a little bit creative, guys. Get a little bit creative. Stop that mess. Just stop it. It's not okay. Oh. <sighs> stop that you're just going to annoy people and that's doing the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be helping the designers not deterring people away from it <sighs> um don't post your work and say please be kind if you aren't in a kind group move on okay that's a twofer this is from my um this is from my my Kiwi Bestie, another one from, from my Kiwi Bestie, and it it's an annoying thing, thing of mine. If you can't take constructive criticism, or if you can't take criticism that may not be constructive, then you don't need to be putting your stuff online. Hopefully, you her second part of this is if you're not in a kind group, then you need to move on, and, and I firmly believe in that. I leave groups all the time. If people are just consistently stinking nasty, then I don't want to be there. Those are not my people. I want to be with people who are going to lift each other up. And if you can't do that in, in a nice way and you can't give constructive criticism, then I'm not going to be there. But on the other side of that, you also have a responsibility. If you're not willing to deal with people coming to you and, and giving you um, advice, especially if you ask for it, if you open up your mouth and you ask for it and then you get hurt, over people doing exactly what you asked for, I'm gonna need you to settle down. That's not how any of this works. That's not how the internet works. Don't complain about it. Um, if you like a pattern, why are you incapable of Googling yourself? Why do you always ask for pattern links? Google people, Google, listen. You know what I can't stand? And it's probably the same thing that this one is talking about. Somebody will post with all of the relevant information. Look at what I made. They're so happy. They've made something beautiful. Here's all the details. Here's the designer. Here's where you can get it. Yada, yada, yada. And nobody will read that sucker. And then there will be 20 comments in the bottom. Link, please. Link, please. It's right there. It's right there there right there why can't you read it honest to goodness i i don't it's right there <sighs> google again we're in this age of information and technology <sighs> oh Crocheting a blanket in 100 plus degrees is okay with me. Okay, so Sue, you know, maybe somebody has central heating and air. Not me, but maybe somebody has central heating and air, and, and, they, and they are perfectly okay with that. I mean, that's a thing. It happens. It does. Who... <laughs> Screenshots, do you know this pattern? Oh, oh, man. All right, I am going over here. I am going over here. I'm gonna throw in something. YouTubers love it when you send them friend requests randomly and we don't know who you are. Listen, you guys. There is a reason, if you go to Marley Bird's profile on Facebook, you go to my profile on Facebook, there is a reason that we redirect you to our business pages. Because if you're fans of our work, then that's where you need to be, okay? My Facebook, that's my house. That's where I share information with the people that I know and love, where I keep up with people that I know and love. And, and, I love all of you. I'm there for all of you, but my goodness, we have we have a Facebook group for that. Have my Facebook page. 
there's the YouTube channel, there's all kinds of ways for you to interact with me. And if I don't know your name and you've literally just found my channel and you send me a Facebook request, I'm going to decline it. I don't know you. And I'm not one of those people. Some people are still, still, you know, like try to keep some of their privacy going on uh, about them. Some type of, of it. I don't know you. I'm so sorry, but I do not know you. My family, my friends, that's who I want as my Facebook friends. Not, not, not everybody. Not everybody. I do realize that there are some people that don't have that mentality and they just accept, 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 and those are the ones that ISIS is going to get. <laughs> I'm not one of them. I'm just not one of them. That, that's, that's not how this works. I'm trying to get back to this post to make sure that um, I haven't... Here comes some... Nope, that's the end of it. Alright, so... Um, um, dun, 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 dun. All right, Ida, I thought that you were sending me these, they were chatting. I thought that she was sending me messages of the, I asked Ida to keep track of the ones that were um, posted here in, in the chat while we were going through because I knew that my blood pressure was going to go up and that I wasn't going to be paying very much attention to chat. Oh, you're so sassy tonight. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to make the whole world angry on Thursday anyways, because that's always what happens <laughs> when I post content that videos. People always go into a rage whenever I post content that videos. So, um, you, you know, I mean, why not turn the, the, the whole week into that? One set of hooks is all you need. One work in progress at a time. Okay, so on, on one hand, yes. Because I don't use anything else now except for Clover Soft Touch. But it took me a really, really, really long time to get there. Took me a really, really, really long time to get there. And then, even now, even now, there are some times when I have to reach over for a Susan Bates. Because, unpopular um, opinion... There's no such thing as splitty yarn. <laughs> really, sometimes I have to change the tool that I'm working with because my tapered hooks just aren't cutting it. So sometimes I do have to switch over to a Susan Bates. So, you know, I, I kind of disagree with that one. Kind of disagree with that one. Even though I'm like 99.8% of the time, I'm using a, a Clover Soft Touch. Um, this one is from Marley Bird in the chat. When somebody tries to tell me my pattern doesn't work, but they are not using the same yarn, or they are not even, oh gosh, wait, wait, she just posted more, okay. Um, they're not using the same yarn, or they're not even using the same weight yarn, and they didn't get gauge, or they didn't even bother. I, I don't understand it. I mean, do you want me to drive over to your house and crochet the item for you? Is that what you would like? Sometimes I, honest to goodness, feel like that. Like, how much, like... I, I don't understand. You know, like sometimes I, I, I have to sit back and I have to look at these emails that that I get as a designer and wonder if people are being for real. Seriously, no joke. I have to wonder if, if people are being for real with, with some of the questions that, that they that they send in because it's so outlandish. It's so outlandish. The audacity that, that people have and the entitlement that they think that they have just because, you know, they found our pattern online somewhere and, and they decide that they want to do it, but it's not to their liking. Or they decide to make alterations themselves and then suddenly it's our fault. I don't understand that. Uh, buy the yarn, I will do it, then you never know what yarn you'll get. Oh no, no, never, never. That one is so common. $10 make me a blanket. No. No, not going to happen. I find it annoying when a tutorial doesn't show the finished project before the tutorial other than the thumbnail. So, okay. So here's how I film my tutorials because I, um, 
And then the other thing is, is the, the equipment thing. I film a lot of tutorials for blankets. Craziness. <laughs> the, the, these, the, these blankets are big and you can only get so much into, into a frame. I film working through the tutorial, then I film my outro, and then I film my intro. Then I will have the, the, the finished piece. But sometimes that's not, you, you just can't do that. Sometimes it, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes the, it doesn't always fit into it. So there goes that, that thing again with, you know, you don't do it so you don't understand that it's just not always possible. It's not always possible. Just isn't. Um, unpopular opinion. Dark chocolate Tim Tams are wrong. I don't like dark chocolate. I'm not a fan of the dark chocolate Tim Tams. I'm not. But it's because I don't like dark chocolate. I really don't. White chocolate is not chocolate. That's a lie straight from the pit of H-E double hockey, hockey sticks. It's good. Um, granny squares aren't turned after each round. Oh, they can be. They can be. Yes, they can be. <sighs> I don't like doing it. It's not my preferred way to do it because I don't like to look at the back of stitches because I'm OCD, but that's the easiest way to do it. Doing a blanket for yarn inspirations. Imagine if I had to knit an entire blanket for every blanket tutorial. Listen, I'm I'm there with you. <laughs> I'm I'm there with you. There are times, you know, like when I filmed the Arizona. The only reason that the era, my second Arizona got made because again it starts in the center and then you mirror the sides going up. And when I went to film. I only worked on on one side to and I had no intentions of of doing the other side then I was going to do it eventually but I wasn't going to do it while I was sitting down because they they get so big and it's so hard guys it's so hard to film big blankets super super hard and it's super time consuming super super time consuming and my patrons will tell you because my patrons have sat there. I turn on YouTube for them, for, for just the patrons. They're the only ones that can see it. So they can watch me filming, doing the behind the scenes stuff because they like it. And they they see me. You know, you, you film for seven to eight minutes to show the repeat. And then once the blanket gets bigger, you know, you got 30 minutes maybe before you can get back around to be able to film the next seven or or eight minutes. It's it's a tedious, it's a tedious process. <sighs> um US cotton yarn sucks. I absolutely agree. It does. And John was one of those people, you know, like Emma or Gamer Widows earlier. She wasn't here when, when I went through the thing, but I did go through it. Um, John was one of those ones that, that didn't like cotton either because he's an American and he had never felt decent cotton before. His mind has been changed now. You're welcome. That's, you're welcome. That's why you have a three-car garage full of yarn. Listen, don't you judge her. Don't you judge her. That judgy tone. Don't you judge her. That's happiness. That's happiness in that three car garage. Unpopular opinion. Back post stitches are fun and not to be worked around. Everybody always tries to fix those in Vanessa's pattern. I know. I don't understand that. I I I I don't get that. It's a back post stitch. I mean, not everybody can do all the things. I get it. Not everybody can do all of the things. And I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with um, with back post stitches. And I, I've never been able to understand why people have so much trouble with them. I, I, 
I don't get it. Lots of people have trouble with it. And then, see, that goes into that whole thing because that happens to Vanessa all the stinking time. That happens to Vanessa all the time. They go in there and they don't want to do the stitches the way that she has put it in there. And then all of a sudden, her admin team has to figure out what these people did differently that, that's causing their problems because they didn't want to follow the pattern because they didn't want to do that stitch. And suddenly, it's Vanessa's fault. Um, I wish there were more resource, resources for people to learn how to do the math for crochet. I mean, it, it's just math. It's just math. You know, I, I, maybe that's one of the things that I'm taking for granted because I'm very good at math, but it, it's just math. If you work out a swatch of something and something it, it like you get getting four stitches, four stitches, and just I I don't know. Maybe that's an issue with like I I I don't know. I'm not gonna do the math for you. <sighs> And it's just like math is the universal language. Literally, the aliens speak math. We're convinced of it. <laughs> math is a universal language. Why can't everybody math? I don't get it. You, um, oh my, your pattern costs too much. Is there any way you can give me a discount or give it to me for free? You know what? I'm going to give you one up on that, okay? I'm going to tell you something that happened to Jennifer and I while we were in New York City at Vogue Knitting Live, and this is the God's honest truth. This happened, and I just got an email the other day. It happened to me for the second time. Literally had somebody tell Jennifer standing on the floor, on the showroom floor at Vogue Knitting Live, we were vending that Jennifer should give her the yarn that she had in her arms because it is what Jesus would do. And she was serious. She made a stink about it. Very, very, very nasty about it. It's what Jesus would do. You should give this yarn to me because he would want me to have this yarn and be happy. You are a Christian, aren't you? I mean, she kept going on and on and on again. And poor Jen, poor Jen, like the audacity that people have the audacity that people have and you guys have no idea when it comes to patterns how long it takes i think my patrons have more of a clue now because they they watch me go through the process they my, my pattern that's getting ready to go into testing here soon like it months months to just finish the concept in my brain and then like I took a picture of it, of, of the evolution that it went to before I finally got happy with it. You know, there's so much work that goes into patterns. So much work. The audacity of you to go to somebody and, and say, you know what, I can't afford to pay you $4 for that pattern. You should give it to me. It's $4. $4. that you 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 stop it no you stop it um i hate that in some knitting groups if you utter the word acrylic you are in cahoots with the devil listen you know what Th those are not your people okay there's a reason that my title with good loops is the director of squish because I love all squish. I think that there is a time and place for all types of yarn. And while I mostly work in nurturing fibers yarn, I still love acrylic. I love paint box. It is my favorite acrylic yarn that is out there. I have a whole room filled with acrylic yarn that's paint box. Then I have, I mean, a whole passel of style craft acrylic yarn. 
there there's nothing wrong with with acrylic yarn and and those people are just trying to be something that that they're not honestly that's how i feel about it they're they're trying to make up for they're trying to make up for something that is lacking within their life so they're being mean to to other people there's nothing wrong there is some very good quality acrylic yarn out there very good quality acrylic yarn um, <laughs> what gets me is folks say it's one weight but feels more like another like fingering and DK and I don't get any of it and to me it's either thick or thin yarns <laughs> freaky the pencil test honey the pencil test there's the pencil test like you can find out what what it is by the pencil test um Sally said I've had people ask me um, I can use such and such yarn for this project instead of the yarn I use. Yeah, sure you can, so long as you meet the gauge. Right? Especially, and I don't understand that. That's another thing with, with, with the entitlement of, of people. And it's probably why I will never make a garment, is aside from a wrap or a shawl or a scarf or something like that. I'm never going to make a crochet jumper or a sweater. I'm never going to do it because of that because I have too many friends who are designers and I've heard too many horror stories about people doing that well you know I, I don't want to use that yarn I want to use this yarn so g can you tell me how much I'm, I'm going that's not my responsibility that's not what I designed that's not what I put out there if you want to make alterations to it yourself then you need to do it you need to do it it is not my responsibility it is not a designer's responsibility to figure out your gauge math when you decide that you want to use a different type of yarn it's not. It's going right up on there with j just a couple weeks ago there was this huge thing going on where people are trying to uh, trying to make a movement to encourage or force designers to give multiple gauges for different types of of yarn or work up patterns in multiple yarns. With, with, you know, like high-end, mid-grade, and then low-end, low-cost, co cost-effective yarn because it's unfair to people that can't afford the nice yarn that, that the designers are, are working in. I'm sorry, your what hurts? By all means, just, just take all of my time. Take all of my time. Take all of the money that you're complaining about giving to me for, for this paid-for pattern. Now I'm going to spend it on two other types of, of yarn and all of the hours to have that crocheted up to give you photo examples of, I mean, come on. You have lost your mind. You have lost your mind. Lost your mind. That's something I'm never going to jump onto, and I'm always, always going to jump out and, and fuss about that. Lost their minds. You don't own me. Hmm. Um, Matt said, reading the comment and people asking for the info that's in the description because they didn't bother to read. Yep, we've already been there. Get to the point. My response, you misspelled. Thank you for the free video tutorial. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the nasty comments we get on YouTube. I'm telling you, you guys, if you guys want a good laugh, like go back and I mean the really nasty nasty horrible ones I do delete but every time I release a content theft video whoo people whoo people show their true true colors and then and and then the people that that leave come oh well that yarn is pretty but it would have been better if you would have chosen this yarn listen are you the one wearing it are you the one that's going to display this in your living room no? No? Okay then. I'm gonna need you to step back. If that's the color yarn that you want to use, then you just go ahead with that. You can see my stitches. You can see me working it. There is nothing wrong with the color that I chose. I'm not using black. I'm not using white, which are traditionally hard. Darker colors, it's hard to show when we're doing the stitches, so it's not good for, an, for, for instruction. 
But as long as it's not an issue like that, who in, who in Sam Hill are you to tell me what I should be doing on my channel? This is my house. This is not Burger King. This is its crochet o'clock. <sighs> I have this yarn. What can I make with it? Oh, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Seriously, I mean, the sky is the limit. Literally, there are so many patterns out there. So many patterns. If you just put in a little bit of effort to go and look at it, there are so many, so many patterns out there. Furls hooks are overrated. I don't know. I have never been able to bring myself to, to drop that kind of money on a crochet hook. I'm not even going to lie to you. That's a whole lot of money. I have never been able to bring myself to do it. So I, I can't speak if they are or, or they aren't. Um, they said ZZ Twist is great for crocheters, but it's not so great for left-handers. No, it isn't because it's going the wrong, it's going the opposite way. So it's gonna unravel on you. So then you're going to have issues working. So yeah, yeah, no. It's not okay, Sally. I understand. I feel you. I'm not a lefty, but I do understand that that point. I get it. I've been told that crochet is inferior to knitting. Listen, I don't think that one or the other is better than either. I think that they both have their place. I think that they both can create equally beautiful items. I think they each have their own um, levels of, of complication and easiness depending on your level and, and, and the level of pattern that, that you go for. I don't think that, that I get aggravated when, when people start, I get aggravated when, when we're all family folks. We're just cousins. We're all family. <sighs> We're all family. I don't, I don't get that. What kind of crochet needles do you use? <laughs> I don't know. Kim, I, I, I read what you said, but I'm not going to go there. I read what I did read read what you said and I know that but I'm not that's a completely different animal a completely different animal <sighs> oh man you guys I just spent an hour and 50 minutes <laughs> Okay, Marley said, I've fallen in love with Touche Crochet Handle with Susan Bates Hook. I am, um, I'm not an inline fan. I am more of, listen, I, I'm a creature of habit, and I really do love my Clover Soft Touch. Um, isn't the pencil test where you stick a pencil under your boob to see if you need a bra? Kim? That, that's not okay. All right, everybody is saying, what terminology do you use, U.S. or U.K.? U.S. I'm an American. I'm an American. Oh, man. You guys, there are so many things that, that, that's, that, that, that's. Oh, Starla said, hi, I'm new here, and hi, if this, I should have given a different disclaimer at the beginning of this two-hour stint. Because poor people that are new, if you're new here and and you have never been to my channel, okay, I don't go on these tangents all the time, okay? This is a special occasion, all right? We asked for this. <sighs> so... <laughs> Oh, Marley, I'm so sorry. Marley said, 
I used to use boy hook, but when I started working for coats, I had to change to a Susan Bates. I'm so sorry. But I'm glad that it's working for you. I'm glad that you've gotten yourself used to it and, and, and you can go with that. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Yeah! Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Or if you were like the two other people who didn't like me calling out, apparently disagreeing with them, you know, you can hit a thumbs down. Spoiler alert, YouTube doesn't see any difference between a thumbs up and a thumbs down. It really doesn't. It's all interaction and that's all that the algorithm cares about. No. <laughs> who asked for this? I didn't ask. I know I asked for this. I, I asked for this earlier. I, I asked for this earlier, had I have known. I mean, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't. Yes, but you use YouTube terms of charts. I, Sally, I don't understand what you're talking about with YouTube terms of charts. I don't understand that. Isn't that called a rap test? Yes, yes, it, it's a rap test, Sue. It's a wrap test. Take the pencil, you wrap the yarn around it. So many wraps equals this type of yarn. This has been so entertaining and I mostly agree. Well, that's good. Rage typing for the win. Who was rage typing? Was I rage? I wasn't rage typing. Oh, man. Why are you angry? I'm not angry. I'm not angry. We're just going through, oh, we're waiting for Thursday for the rage typing. Yes, Thursday the rage typing will ensue. It will ensue because I'm going to make so many people mad. Because I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm calling them out. <laughs> Marley said, Sally, huh? Or charts. It's an inside Zoomy joke. Okay, well, I wasn't there in that Zoom, so I don't get it. Marley doesn't get it either. <laughs> we're YouTubers and we're like, huh? What are we not doing that's upsetting folks? <laughs> Wraps per inch test. The pencil test is a whole other thing. Okay, fine. Maybe that's one of those YouTuber terms. Okay, I just created a new term. Okay, the wrap per inch test is no longer the wrap per inch test. Henceforth, it's going to be known as the pencil test. Okay, <sighs> I'm joking. Not really. I hate it when that happens. I hate it when that happens. Uh, uh, she's not angry. She's empathetic, right? <laughs> you open this can of worms. I'm just enjoying the show with an occasional poking of the bear, right? Right? That's why I was I, I was waiting for Kim to wake up because I knew that as soon as Kim woke up, or the the rest of the Aussies, because Chantel jumped in on it too. Mercy. <sighs> Oh, and if you can't wait until Thursday, become Steph's patron. Yes, it's already released to to the patrons of the... Um, there. There is a level on my Patreon where you get early releases for my patterns, for my videos, whenever possible, all of that. So the patrons that are of that um, level and above, they already have access to it. They were all over that sucker immediately. People in a group were asked if they used UK or US terms and people replied and said that they used charts and YouTube. Okay, well, I mean, that's a thing. Listen, it, it, it's a thing and I think that it's a beautiful thing. Okay, we have eight minutes left and I'm gonna use this time as a teacher, as an advocate for crochet and for people learning how to crochet. It is absolutely in this day and age of technology 100% when people say that they use YouTube, they mean it because they don't know how to read charts, they don't know how to read the written patterns, and that's how they know how to do things. So many people, so many people are visual learners. That's why people like me have a job. So, uh, so many people, you know, there's people with dyslexia have issues reading, reading patterns. And there, there are even people who design on YouTube exclusively because they can't write a pattern. And listen, it's hard. It is not easy writing a pattern. If you take this a simple granny square and write out the actual written pattern for a granny square, that sucker belongs on a wall at NASA. I'm not even going to lie to you, okay? It looks Greek. 
to me. The first time I ever had to write out the pattern for a granny square, I went, what the heck? No wonder, no wonder I am blessed to be able to do what I do because it's hard and it's confusing. So when people, on, when, when people say, I YouTube, I know YouTube, that's how I crochet YouTube, they mean it. They mean it. And, and technology has changed. And so many people are out there designing things exclusively on, on YouTube. It's absolutely 100%. 100%. You know, like, the, there's not a lot of us that make having video tutorials a priority. Sometimes it can't always happen. You know, I used to film all of Emma's tutorials for her. But my life, when, when we opened up Good Loops... Um, my life has just gotten too busy, and I even struggle to film my own tutorials now, so I, I can't do it for Emma all the time anymore. But it, it's important, because we reach such a huge, more of a widespread thing. You know, like, you can tell people, listen, somebody's going to hold your hand through this. They're going to show you how to do this every step of the way. You don't have to be scared to do this. You, it's all, it's a whole new world for our craft. And when it finally became big, when it finally took off on YouTube, it was a beautiful thing, you know, par pioneered by people like Marley, who's been at it for years. People like Bonnie, who's been at it. I think Bonnie's channel is eight years old. I don't know how old Marley's channel is. I'm, I'm so sorry. But, you know, they, they led the way for for us and they opened up a whole new world for people who have medical disabilities that keep them from being able to to do it with the written word or or with charts that quite frankly their brains just just don't comprehend it and they need the visual aid it's a whole new world guys it and i'm so blessed that i get to be a part of it and that i get to to help people and I wish that every single pattern that was out there was able to have a video tutorial and and I wish that I had the capability to put out patterns and have the written word and have it be exactly how people want it because you're either too wordy or you're not wordy enough and it looks too Greek or or you've given too much explanation, stop being too wordy, or we need more pictures, there's too many pictures, you don't have a chart, why do I have to print out a chart? You know, there's I wish that I could give everything to everybody exactly how they want it. But at the end of the day, I can only do so much. We can all on, only do so much. And I think that it's important for everybody to remember that everybody learns differently. Everybody learns differently. And everybody learns at their own pace and in very, very different ways. So when people say when people say that their their answer to that is, is YouTube that's completely relevant we have a message right before the end we have a message hold on <laughs> did somebody call Delbert did somebody call Delbert and 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 say something? <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, alrighty, you guys. We have two minutes left. If you are not a patron of of mine, there's all kinds of good stuff that that goes on behind the scenes that that they get to see that that you guys don't. There's all kinds of different levels that that you guys can can pledge each month to become part of of the patron group over there. We have lots and lots of, of fun. Don't forget that tomorrow morning on the Good Loops Facebook page at, wait, tomorrow afternoon. It's morning for me, but it's afternoon <laughs> when I'm telling everybody. 1 p.m. Eastern time, Jennifer and I will be live over on the Good Loops Facebook page tomorrow 
new content theft video comes out on Thursday, there's a countdown to it on the channel. So y'all can be there, okay? That's going to happen at, um, at, not 10, 11, at noon, noon on Thursday. Super exciting. If you're not part of the It's Crochet Clock Facebook group, I don't know what you're doing because the shenanigans continue there all week long. We all poke fun at each other. And if you are new and you come in and we let you in and you report you report a post about food because it doesn't have anything to do with crochet, you are not our people. Okay, we talk about food normally in this live and then it floods over into the crochet group, okay? Don't go reporting those posts. All right. But you guys have a great week. Have a wonderful week. I will see you guys tomorrow or in the Facebook group or next week or on Thursday. If, if you happen, we'll run into each other soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been a great evening. Bye.